Did you want to have a little egg roll? Oh, a little egg roll? Just a little. Ouch! It's okay, you can bite me. Mm -hmm. I'm tough. <laughs> I can't believe this is going on TV. <laughs> has caught the eye of the world for being playful, bike friendly, and of course, a little bit indecent. Cuisine has been at the forefront of its acclaim. Here, strange is the new normal, punk isn't dead, and the hippies aren't passe. Welcome to my new home, Portland, where it's cool to be weird. The city of Portland is renowned for its wild and wacky flavor combinations. It's no wonder that Salt and Straw has been so successful here by putting bizarre ingredients together in its ice cream. I'm headed to their factory to try my hand at making a few of their favorites. The cool thing about ice cream is it's something that everyone's always like excited about. You can't be sad while you're eating ice cream. So it allows us almost to use our ice cream kind of as a platform to really showcase these various ingredients that other people might not expect in ice cream. So I've heard all about your crazy flavor <laughs> schemes. What are we making today? Bone marrow with smoked cherries. I'm a huge fan of bone marrow. And Did you like read my mind before picking this flavor? To start, actually we should just get the bone marrow in the oven. We're gonna cook them just really lightly and then scrape them clean. In the meantime, I think we should work on the cherries. We'll pit them and then smoke them. So we'll put the fresh ones in. We've had some in here for the past couple hours that we'll take out. Wow, what a beautiful be color. Ready. It's okay. Heaven. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, it's so good. Thank you. You're a master good. of your craft, I can already <laughs> tell. So this is bourbon, along with a few different spices. Mm. We're gonna combine this with the cherry juice, and that's gonna be the flavor for our ice cream base. Wow, this looks incredible. How long have you guys been open? Uh, three years now. We started in a food cart. We started with seven flavors, okay. and people just started coming and lining up, and we quickly moved into our shop. The city has really kind of embraced us. We've done just over 200 different flavors in those three years. This one in particular with the bone marrow we made for a meat festival actually here in town. So it's really inspiring and like it's a cool city to be in to learn from. Ooh, wow, those look cooked to perfection. I can already tell that these two flavors are going to combine perfectly. <laughs> yeah. They will, I promise. Okay. <laughs> awesome, I love this great bone marrow. And here all we want to do is just cook it down to liquefy this marrow. And then it should be ready for cream. That's it. So now we spin. These are the ice cream machines. We do all of our ice cream in five gallon batches. So it's really just small, like very, very carefully crafted. I'm just going to strain this to get all the frickies out. OK. The what? The frickies. The frickies? The frickies. Is that a scientific term? The grizzle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the cherry juice. Cherry juice with the... Uh, Smoked sauce. Here's the cream. So that's bone marrow cream. That'll oh. flavor, that'll give it like that really dense, rich base. Put it in an ice cream machine. You just pour it straight in. Wow, the colors are so gorgeous. Reminds me of like sand art. I know, this is one of my favorites. All right, so... This is the start video. button right here. This is where the magic happens. We'll let it spin maybe five to 10 minutes and okay. it'll be ready. What about these cherries? These will go in after it's coming out of the machine and stir them in afterwards. Okay, go ahead and start tossing them in. Every couple of dollops. Wow, the texture looks so smooth. It should just be that perfect combination. Wow. You want to taste test? Yeah, of course I do. Dare I say this is the best ice cream I've ever had? Mm. I feel like I'm drinking bourbon and eating smoked cherries. You gotta pay attention to this ice cream. It deserves a lot of respect because it's made with a lot of love. This is, <laughs> this is what's up. It didn't take long after moving here to realize that Portland is a bike town. One of the weirdest things that cyclists do here to work up an appetite is the late night rite of passage known as zoo bombing. 
So I'm meeting up with veteran Zoo Bomber and co-owner of A Better Cycle to find out what it's all about. What is Zoo Bombing exactly? Zoo Bombing is a, a group of people that we like to get together on our Sunday nights and uh, ride up to the zoo and then start riding the bikes all the way down the hill back into Portland so we can get on the, the max again and do it again. You'll get everyone running from a regular bike to a double-decker tall bike, but most of them ride little tiny kids' bikes. <laughs> so, the smaller the wheels, uh, the more extreme it can be. We're gonna take a ride through Portland and meet up with other zoo bombers at a MAX station where we can get a lift up to Washington Park. The run starts near the Oregon Zoo and zooms down the public suburban streets to the city. It's not about who finishes first, but more about finishing without crashing. Three, two, one, zoo bomber! Now we're headed to the Roxy, a local late night favorite that's been open 24 seven for the past 20 years. I have never experienced anything like zoo bombing before. I've never broken a speed limit on a bicycle before. Thank you, Aaron, <laughs> appreciate that. Because of Portland, it opened the imaginations of a lot of people over the world. It's not just growing up and being an adult, you're still growing up and acting like a little kid. And riding the little kid's bike. Exactly. And riding the little kid's bike. Exactly. <laughs> some chili cheese fries here. Oh, oh good. Morning. After you ride a child's bike down an enormous hill and basically risk your life for the sake of fun, this is exactly the type of food you want to eat, right? About right. Mm, good. Really good exactly. chili, ranch greasy cheese. Like oh yeah, ranch, like you gotta put ranch on this. <laughs> Has anyone ever been ticketed? It's really rare, not very often at all. We've got a $20,000 statue erected for us in the middle of downtown. Like, I think we've got a little bit of a, a safety cushion. I mean, the, the police in press conferences stated, we let them police themselves. Yeah. That's amazing. I didn't know how much fun it could be to bomb down a hill on a bike. It's mostly fun because of the people, I think. Passionate about their sport, passionate about fun. That's what Portland is all about. Oregonians love getting naked, so it comes as no surprise that in the state of Oregon, you can put a strip club just about anywhere. Portland has more strip clubs than any other city in the United States. You can offer full nudity, and you can serve whatever you want when it comes to booze. The rule is, since the state liquor laws are very strict, you have to serve food with your alcohol. This lends to a very exotic and exquisite scene when it comes to dining inside the clubs, and it's only paralleled by the dancers on the stage. I got a handful of cash from Vice. Let's go make it rain. My first stop has to be the Lucky Devil Lounge. This place takes great pride in the variety on its menu, both in the food and in the women. But before I experience what the dancers have to offer, I want to meet with the chef, Luke Zimmerman, and see what he has cooking in his kitchen. I started working here because of the food. In a lot of places, do the bare minimum. They'll have a can of pickled eggs and a microwave. And here we do a little more. We'll do our mac and cheese. It's our, one of our most popular dishes. Get a pat of butter in here, and then take some of the hot sauce there. Sriracha? Yep. Makes Portland go around. It's good. So is this ready to go? Yeah, that's ready. Oh man, that looks delicious. You want some steak bites too? I mean, I'm always down to eat. Mm -hmm. 
nice. That looks really good. So what's your favorite thing to cook in here? Probably steak bites. Cool. Have you had any like flaming accidents? Occasionally, when I'm really busy, I will flip this up on my arm, <gasps> but it goes out pretty quick. Okay, you're flame resistant? Yeah, I've been doing <laughs> it for a long time. You won't find this anywhere else at a strip club here in Portland. And if I was working tonight, that would like start me off in the right direction for sure. I can't wait to eat it. I just am doing what they want me to do. It's my job. It's a hard life. <laughs> I just eat like a fucking pig all day long. I get to see hot chicks take off their clothes and meet really cool people. <laughs> Lily was badass. She had a big tattoo, which I'm sure hurt like a mofo. So she's a tough broad. So the food at Lucky Devil was good. It was really good. I had a lot of fun feeding the strippers. One of the girls was definitely into the mac and cheese and she had it all over her face. I hope she wasn't gluten free or lactose intolerant. What you do, girl? If you're hungry, you can have some food. The blonde, her name was Raquel, was definitely a carnivore. I could see it in her eyes when I was feeding her steak. You love steak? I could tell. I was like, what a just like, I don't know, you need it because you're jumping around. I feel so weird eating at a strip club, it's like crazy. I feel like such a man. What did you do before this? At a preschool? <laughs> That's awesome. All my money, girl. All of it. Just take it all. I've seen all kinds of vaginas tonight, and we're gonna go see some more. We're gonna see some vegan vaginas now. We are on our way to Casa Diablo, the first vegan strip club in the world. I'm interested in seeing their cuisine and watching some more ladies get crazy and hopefully feeding them some vegan stuff like broccoli, maybe some kale. Only in Portland are you gonna find a vegan strip club. The meat is on the pole, not on the plate. It's all cruelty free. Nice, I love it. <laughs> making some food for you guys to sample. Now I see this is like a bar type of cuisine that you're cooking up. Do you think you're converting other people to veganism through your food here? It's actually like open people's eyes to the possibilities and how easy it can be to be vegan. A lot of people think, oh, vegan, that's just salad. All you eat is salad. And it's like, that's not true at all. We have all the vegan junk food, bar food. It's much healthier, but as you can see, we still fry the shit out of a lot of things. Yum. <laughs> I know how these are normally made, but like, how have you made these vegan? What ingredients have you changed? Well, for the nachos, instead of using dairy cheese, we make the nacho cheese sauce here ourselves. What do you make the cheese out of? Nutritional yeast flake. Okay. Tapioca flour. All right. Soy milk and secrets. <laughs> Magic. The egg rolls or spring rolls, there's no egg. We use a different wrapper. With the taquitos, instead of using like chicken or beef, we have soy curls. Cool. And then with the burgers, well, they're garden burgers. This food is all for me, all for me. What's your name? 
I'm Marjana. Marjana, I'm Gabby. I think we can pretty much do whatever we want. We could do a lap dance, and maybe I can feed you some of my vegan nachos. First, I want you to take that all the way off. You crazy? Mmm. Is it good? Ooh. Wait, am I allowed to touch? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hello. Wow, you're hot. <laughs> all the best foods are dick shaped. Oh, no, we don't need any dicks. Whoa. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. My mouth's open for you. Wait, I'm going to hit one too. Mm -hmm. Spread your legs. Mmm. That was fun. <laughs> I can actually eat food upside down, I learned. Did you try the sauce? No. Mm. Put me some nachos. Are you hungry? Mmm. Okay. <laughs> Best nacho I've ever had. Mm. Oh my god. Yeah. Your skin is so soft, it must be all the vegan foods that you eat. <laughs> the vegan diet definitely cultivates a nice booty. Ready? I'm just gonna make it rain like as much as possible. <laughs> that was the best lap dance I've ever had. Thank you so much. Thank you, beautiful. All right guys, I'm gonna go home and jerk off. <laughs> We're making wine in clay vessels the way that it was done for centuries. My kids do timeouts in these. Oh my god, that's uh, amazing. I'm a huge fan of Pinot Noir. You're in a good place for it. It's good stuff. We had this whole idea at Union Wine of kind of pinkies down. No bullshit. Hopefully no bullshit. Yeah. yeah. You're more than welcome to spit on my floors. 